What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1990 Toyota Carina ED hardtop. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Carina for two reasons. First of all, I've never driven a Carina before, but the second reason is the fact that this is packed with awesome Japanese tech from the 1990s, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But if you would like to share your vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that four cylinder under the hood, putting out two liters of displacement, and it's actually something that we've seen before here on the channel. It is the 3SGE, and it's from the Toyota Celica. This car was meant to be a four-door Celica. ED in the title actually means excitement and dressy. So like kind of luxurious, kind of sporty sort of feel. So that's what the engine and that's what the drivetrain is supposed to be. It's supposed to give a light, fun, yet sophisticated feel. And I have to say, I think they achieved their goal relatively well. I don't know if this is the dressiest or sportiest vehicle I've ever driven, but it does have the spirit, the engine of the Celica, which is an incredibly sporty automobile. Now, like I said, paired to it is a five speed manual transmission. It's shifting really, really well for being over 30 years old. Nice light shifts. I love it. And it's exactly what I expect out of a Toyota product. Last but not least, this is front wheel drive. Like I said, it's based off the Celica, but what it does have that's interesting is four wheel steering. So I can turn it on and off if I would like, but this still has functioning four wheel steering, which the owner said he didn't really think about too much until he took it down a mountain road. And then he said he really felt it. So just another really, really cool 90s feature that has since gone away. So how does it feel to actually drive the Carina ED hardtop? Well, in two words, exciting and dressy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, it does feel exciting. It feels like a four-door Celica. And I know I'm not breaking new ground because that's how they designed it to be. But I mean, they hit the nail on the friggin' head if that was their goal. It feels light on its feet. Maybe that's because the steering is pretty light. Maybe that's because the shifter is pretty light. All of it all together, it feels athletic. It feels like one of those soccer kids that you went to high school with that would bounce off the walls given the opportunity to speak up. That's how it feels. And so mission accomplished Toyota. Mission very well accomplished. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have rather boring gauges. Toyota is known for their boring gauges in this era. On the left, I have my battery voltage and fuel. In the center, I get my speedometer and tachometer, which does have a light for if four-wheel steering is engaged or disengaged. And then off to the right, I have my coolant temperature and oil pressure. On the steering wheel, I do have two buttons for the horn. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun one, but that's it. I do get an airbag, which is nice to see for 1990, a little bit earlier than what we got here in the States. Off to the right, I do have a climate control vent and my pole switch up and down, which is fun. And then moving out of the door, we have my window locks, door locks, and power window options. Moving into the center, I do have a digital clock as well as two climate control vents and my climate controls. They're a little crowded, um, but it is certainly nice to see that in a car like this. However, just my luck, the air conditioning is not functioning today, so I'm sweating it out for this episode. Then we have the stock Toyota logic control deck, very typical verbiage you would see from Toyota in this era. But I love all these buttons, AM and FM and tape, really cool stuff. But then we do have pop out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Toyota Carina ED hardtop. And although it fails, I have to give it at least a little tip of the cap for having cup holders at all. <laughs> Then we do have an ashtray and cigarette lighter, of course. And then we have the shifter. The shifter is large and in charge. It's sticking up in the middle of nowhere. It looks presentable. It looks exactly how I would think a shifter from Toyota would look and feel. So no complaints there. Then I do have a handbrake and I have my seating adjustments. We also saw this in the Toyota Celica here in the US, but really cool power seat adjustments down here. 
Then I also have my power mirror switches down here. Then we do get a little center console and the seats. The seats are very comfortable. They have these doilies on them, which are very period correct Japan. And I love seeing that overall, just the total ambiance of this car is fantastic. And the seats really reinforce that. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so I'm in the back of the uh, Toyota Carina ED hardtop. I do get to enjoy the, the B pillarless windows, which is cool, but my knees are smashed. Um, my arm is a little smashed because of this center console that comes down. Um, my left knee is between the door and the seat, which is uh, unpleasurable, I would probably describe it as. So not fantastic. You know, they also had the crown, the Toyota crown shown here. I would much prefer riding the back of that than this. But this was, you know, sporty and dressy or exciting and dressy. So um, I guess, you know, the back seats aren't supposed to be sporty or dressy or I don't know, whatever. Let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Carina ED. Pull this down and then we have a key slot right there. Pull it up. And that is the trunk. Nothing really to write home about, although something the owner pointed out is that it actually gets struts on either side. The reason it doesn't have the big arms that actually go into the body is because they really relied on the trunk to help with the structural rigidity because there is no B pillar. So you could see sort of these like big thick pillars back there. That was to add structural rigidity so the car wasn't all flippy floppy because it didn't have B pillars. Seems like a lot of engineering just to make it look kind of cool on the side, but hey, that's what they did back at Toyota in the late 80s. Now we gotta talk about the looks and this kind of looks Camry-ish until you see that the B pillars are missing. As you'll notice, this car does not have B pillars, which was kind of typical of Japanese sedans back in the day, but definitely not from Toyota. Nissan did it, Mazda did it, but Toyota didn't really do it all that much. And so very interesting to see here in the Carina ED. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving this Carina ED hardtop? Well, first of all, it's been incredibly cool. I mean, how can I have a bad day driving something like this? I don't think I can. I had a little conversation with the owner before I borrowed this car from him, and he said something that really stuck with me. He said, look at what GM was doing the same year, 1990. Take a look at this 1990 Buick Century. Compared to this, that vehicle is stuck in the Stone Age, and this, well, this is flying to a whole nother planet. And that's interesting because modern Toyota to me is so backwards from how this feels. Modern Toyota is very outdated, but back in the day, they were at the cutting edge. And it's a shame that they kept this technology for their home market of Japan and didn't let us Yankees have it. Imagine rolling around in this back in the day, back here in the US. Well, it didn't happen. And four wheel steering as maybe gimmicky or as faulty as it might be, it is gosh darn cool to look at. And so I tip my cap to Toyota for how advanced this vehicle really was and how unique their product lineup was back in the day. Every morning I wake up and I find out that there were more and more Toyotas built in the 90s than I thought the previous evening. So hopefully today you got to learn about the Toyota Carina. Maybe you didn't know that they existed, similar to myself, and I hope you learned something. So maybe the next time you see a bunch of JDM fanboys who think they know it all, ask them about the Carina. I feel like it might turn some heads and poke some ears out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Chris for letting me take out not only this Carina, but this whole list of vehicles as well. He's absolutely awesome. He has a wonderful collection that I am treating myself to this week. He's very, very knowledgeable about these vehicles and I can't thank Chris enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.